Hi, my name is Bob Duncan. This is Fruit Trees and More Demonstration Orchard and Nursery. We are located near Sydney, just north of Victoria, on southeast Vancouver Island, British Columbia, Canada. Today we're going to talk about a system we have developed for growing navel oranges in our climate here, our cool maritime climate. So essentially, uh, with this system, we are growing navel oranges in the ground in a greenhouse that is basically not heated. So the oranges are being produced at essentially no cost. In fact, we've made estimates of the heating cost of about a penny per fruit. So just how is it that we can actually grow navel oranges in our climate? Well, the system is, is as follows. Um, navel oranges are best adapted to growing in true Mediterranean climates. So that would be a climate like California or Spain. The difference between our modified Mediterranean climate that we have here and that of California and, or Spain is that our summers are much cooler and in the winter we can occasionally have temperatures cold enough to damage either the fruit or the tree itself. So how do we develop a system that uh, creates a conditions similar to California? Well, essentially, the summer heat part of it is easily uh, managed by growing them in an unheated greenhouse. So these citrus, they're planted in the ground in an unheated greenhouse, and temperatures in the uh, summer months are managed to uh, keep them very similar to uh, typical temperatures that you would see in the citrus growing regions of California or Spain. In other words, daytime highs, uh, typically 30 to 40 Celsius. Uh, nighttime lows might be a little cooler, 10, 11 degrees. So then we move on to the winter situation. In our climate, the temperature does stay above freezing uh, most of the time in the winter. Uh, but there are approximately 10 to 15 nights in an average winter where the temperature is cold enough that you might get damage to the fruit. So the system that we've developed that even inside the greenhouse, we will cover the citrus with Remay and provide a, a minor heat source like the old incandescent Christmas lights set on a thermostat set at zero. So with the trees inside the greenhouse wrapped with Remay and Christmas lights underneath the Remay, uh, we manage the temperature for the individual trees at about zero Celsius. So the, as, as I mentioned, uh, protected that way inside the greenhouse, the heating costs are absolutely minimal. It's, it's literally a penny or so per fruit heating cost. So next to nothing. So, uh, so this system works really well. We've been doing this for about 30 years here um, and, and get heavy production of extremely high quality fruit. So uh, anyway, so this particular tree behind me, it, um, it measures uh, about two and a half meters high uh, and about two meters wide. Um, and that's typically about the, the size that we keep our trees. And this tree is maintained at this size with almost no pruning. The flying dragon dwarfs it and reduces the vigor, and the Robertson navel itself is already a somewhat uh, uh, dwarfing uh, variety. Um, between those two factors, uh, this tree can be kept very small. So I'm going to take you through the cycle of how the oranges perform here. And we mostly, we've trialed many different types of navel oranges, but we've settled principally on Robertson navel, but Washington navel also works really well. So uh, essentially, uh, the Robertson navel is a natural dwarf, and when it's grafted on uh, flying dragon rootstock, which, is at, which dwarfs it even more, we end up with a tree that's very precocious and productive of very high quality fruit. So these trees, uh, they bloom typically in the month of April. The fruit swells immediately after set, and by the way, uh, no need for bees. Uh, navel oranges set fruit parthenocarpically, seed, totally seedless fruit parthenocarpically. So there's no need to uh, have bees introduced. And if you tried to have bees in here, essentially uh, they become disoriented when they come in a greenhouse. Um, they focus on the sun and they go bouncing off the roof and they can't figure out how to get out. So I don't let them in in the first place. And we set heavy, heavy crops with no bees. So uh, that problem solved. By um, uh, this time of the year, and, and we're the first of November, uh, the fruit has already reached pretty much full size and is uh, somewhat colored up. So the fruit will uh, overwinter um, as 
full size, fully colored fruit, but the sugar level just isn't there yet. Now, if you were growing Robertson or Washington navels in California, you would probably be able to pick them in February, March, in the winter sometime. Um, however, here, uh, we have to wait at least until April or May before the sugar levels are acceptably high. And then what we do is, uh, there's no need to uh, pick the fruit just because it's technically ripe. The fruit will actually store on the tree in perfect condition for at least until now. This is the first of November. So the fruit is starting to fall now, and the quality is just exceptional. I mean, they are absolute sugar bombs. It's just unbelievable how sweet they are. So what I'm trying to tell you is the longer you let them hang on the tree, the sweeter and the juicier they get. So there's, there's, there's no need to, even though you can start eating them in May, you don't have to rush out, pick them all, put them in the fridge or something silly like that. Just leave them on the tree and pick them when you need them. All that happens is they just get better and better, tastier and tastier. We've trialed many different varieties of navel oranges and settled uh, principally on the Robertson navel. This is actually the original plant that I planted uh, 30 years ago here. So this is a Robertson navel on a flying dragon rootstock. This tree has uh, produces uh, about 100 high quality oranges every year. It is on a biennial cycle. Uh, the Robertson navel does have a tendency to go biannual. In other words, it produces fruit so heavily one year uh, that it essentially has no energy to flower the next year. So it's on an, uh, either an odd year or an even year cycle, depending on the tree. This is a tree in an odd year cycle. This tree blossomed in April of this year. This is the 1st of November. So here's how advanced they are by November 1st. Um, this tree um, will not have ripe fruit until next year. So I have in the planting here uh, both odd year and even year producing trees. So we are never without oranges. We have lots of oranges every year. Okay, so now we're going to do the taste test uh, and put our uh, taste buds where our mouth is. So here's a nice Robertson navel. It's a typical shape for it. You can see it's a very easy peeling fruit. And it's just dripping with uh, juice right now. No. Exceptionally rich. Extremely sweet. I don't know what the bricks level is, but it's probably off the chart. And juicy fruit. As good an orange as you'd ever want to eat. If you live along the shores of the Salish Sea, or in northwest West Europe, that's south, uh, southwest England, the low countries, and uh, northwest France, with climatic conditions not too different from here, you too should be able to take advantage of uh, what we've been able to uh, demonstrate here on southeast Vancouver Island. Uh, good luck.